Oh boy, this is more fun than I ever imagined it could be. I've always wanted to fly one of these. Oh, uh, hello everyone. Well, you join us today aboard one of my very favourite Jerry Anderson vehicles. Uh, Moonbase Alpha have very kindly loaned me one of their eagles, and I'm currently getting to grips with the controls. Oh, this is so cool! What's that, Marina? Oh, yes, you're right. It looks like there's another craft closing with us. I'll just slow down enough to get us a better look. <laughs> yes, unless I'm very much mistaken, it looks rather like... like a swift. Oh, dear. But that can only mean... <coughs> Brian, how... how lovely to see you. Uh, are you well? I'm fine. I'm just okey-doke. I really have. You know, it's, it's really nice to see you. Yes, I, I wish I could say the same, Brian, but unfortunately, I've seen the episode you were in. Uh, Marina, grab your staple gun. I'm not gonna harm you. Oh, so am I to gather you're a reformed character since you left Moonbase Alpha? Oh, oh, how to do, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I can't shake hands. I haven't got a hand, but uh, you can pat me if you like. Well, go on, go on. Mm. Marina, please don't encourage him. Brian really is very dangerous, even if he does have a smiley face. Oh! Oh, oh no, no, that, that's the randomizer. That's very valuable. Please don't touch that. Oh, hey. Hey, look, your computer's the same as mine. You know, him and me, we are compatible. Really? So, uh, if I were to ask you to operate the randomizer this week, uh, do you think you could persuade it to give us an episode from a series we've not yet seen? Uh, we are on a bit of a roll with those at the moment, actually. I guess so. Wouldn't get your hopes up, Marina. I don't trust this overgrown slot machine for a moment. Who's the slot machine, you plastic pinbrain? Okay, sorry, sorry, I apologise. Right, let's see. Well, Brian, an interesting choice of series. Yeah, well, I, I like that. And once again, it, it is one that we've not yet seen an episode from. Uh, right, watch this, Marina. He's just done something nice for us. Now he has to do something terribly evil. Can I have lunch with you? Okay, maybe he really has turned over a new leaf. Um, look, Marina, this isn't a very long episode. Uh, why don't you go on ahead with Brian, and I'll join you in about ten minutes, okay? And it's okay. I'll keep the lady safe for you. Right, this way, huh? Hmm? Ah, all these doors are so narrow. Aye, 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 I like you very much! Oh, being out here alone has finally driven that poor robot completely insane. Uh, right, as I said, it is a short episode this week. It's time for our very first visit to Four Feather Falls in Once a Lawman. The four feathers on this hat are magic. They enable Tex Tucker's dog and horse to speak, and his guns to fire without him even touching them. And now, another exciting adventure from Four Feather Falls. I let that intro play in full because, uh... I, I don't know how many people listening to this will actually be familiar with Four Feather Falls. This is uh, Jerry's third, or the third puppet show that Jerry was involved with. The very first that he himself created, um, because on, on The Adventures of Twizzle and Torchy the Battery Boy, those shows have been created by Roberta Lee. This was Jerry's first show of his own, um, which came from an idea actually by composer Barry Gray of a, of a puppet western series. I should be honest right up front and say I have only seen the show through once um, and I do regret that because I remember it being a lovely show uh, I had a few episodes on tape before they came out on DVD and I watched those three over and over but most of the series I'm rather unfamiliar with so it would be interesting to see what goes on here Rocky, quick! Well, straight away we are into <laughs> full-on horse chases and uh, and shootouts. Uh, what's the use? Oh, okay. Well, oh, don't give up now. I was enjoying that. Oh. I'm sorry, old boy. I was doing my best. I know you were, old timer. Ah, oh, come on. We'd better get back. You'll get them, boss. Don't worry. Sorry, Dusty, but I reckon anyone in my place will be worried. 
Say, you think it was the Boise gang? Sure it was. Any idea where they're operating from? Nope, none at all. Reckon I'm worse than the useless. Oh. No one could have done more than you have. Just yeah, we love you, Tex. That boy's a mob is still running loose, robbing and stealing. Why, I reckon the last few weeks just about everyone around here has been robbed. Yeah, you're right there, boss. The bank's been raided three times in two weeks. Folks in Four Feather Falls is feeling mighty sore just now. God, we've, uh, we've arrived with a very dark opening in this episode. Everyone uh, seems to suddenly hate Tex, which I actually seem to recall was a fairly well, regular thing with them. They had too much of a start. They outran me. <laughs> Just like that, eh? And they get away with 5,000 in gold. I'll get them. What yeah, the people of this so town sure seemed to stuck turn against Tex Tucker fairly regularly, and it's... Uh, I reckon you're right, kind of unfair because he is the only hand. lawman yeah. in town. If the whole town isn't robbed of everything they possess by then. Hold it, Marvin. That With no backup, no. Uh, aside from his no. uh, his horse and his dog. I don't actually remember if the rest of the town know that the horse and dog can talk or not. That's your opinion. And the opinion of all decent citizens in this town. In that case, the town had better find someone else to wear this star. Maybe oh, no. That wouldn't be a bad idea at that. So Tex is, is uh, he's taking off his badge. He's he's done. We yeah, you can see that is exactly how we all feel. Oh, okay. poor Tex. I guess there ain't nothing for it. Come on, Dusty. Rocky. Now, something that uh, people who don't know this show may be surprised to hear is that uh, the voice of Sheriff Tex Tucker here is being provided by hey, Nicholas Parsons. You can't just go off like this. And when Sorry, you say man, that to I people, I might move on. The town needs you. It's hard to imagine for people who are used to, to seeing and hearing Nicholas Parsons in a sort of game show host mode uh, or comedy show mode that he can actually he, he can actually act. But he is a really good fit for this character, and it defends my sense of Some of you may have, may know it all happened by accident because his wife at the time, Denise Breyer, was cast in the role of uh, Ma Jones and various other characters, and. Uh, Nicholas just was Nicholas was just reading in parts for her to uh, to act off of, and he got the part of Tex from that. He's a really good fit, and uh, I don't know how much more serious acting work he did. Uh, I know he was in uh, Doctor Who: The Curse of Fenric, and similarly, he was brilliant in that. Uh, also, uh, the Terrorhawks audios, uh, Sale of the Galaxy, where he was uh, sending up uh, a lot of his old uh, game show personas. What do you want, Red Scout? I'd be interested to, to see if he did more more drama stuff, straight drama, because he's very good at it. He's dangerous, Joe. Him no more sheriff. Thrown out of four feather force. What? Hey, you sure of this? Red scalp see with own eyes. Oh. <laughs> now the main no, villains of uh, four feather falls were uh, what are you thinking, Joe? pair of uh, criminals, uh, Pedro and. Um, Fernando, I think. Again, it shows I haven't seen the show for a very long time. But we also had two other secondary villains. Uh, Big Ben, I think, this this chap here. And uh, Red Scalp, uh, sort of uh, Red Indian who's kind of uh, gone off on his own to do nasty things. I don't remember ever seeing them kind of team up uh, as they have done in this episode. Yeah, Which I suppose is quite interesting. It might be uh, quite unusual for this show. What? Heinz Brand? Well, you, you can't go there. That ain't no place for a lawman. You forget, old timer. I ain't a lawman no more. There he is. That's a very familiar David Graham baddie voice there as well. Um, I seem to recall that. Oh, that's a fairly. Uh, I'll go get him fairly nasty crack on the head that Tex just got there. He's been lassoed, pulled off the horse and uh, thrown against some rocks. That looked quite nasty. Uh, yeah, it seemed to be the, the villains in Four Feather Falls, the guest villains, were always uh, played by the same few puppets. You'll find out. Meantime, I'll just relieve you. Which I suppose was a, a forerunner to things like uh, Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet, where you would have the same puppets being reused. I didn't remember it so much in Four Feather Falls, so that's... civil of you. But one don't need to tie me up for that. And they don't I'll look too bad. I think with Four Feather Falls, <laughs> whenever I see it, I'm always surprised 
that it looks as good as it does. The puppets are, by and large, generally more impressive than a lot of the guest puppets in uh, Supercar. I think if you were to, to ask people who didn't know which show was made first, this or Supercar, I, I generally think this, in terms of the characters, looks the better show. Uh, certainly, obviously, Supercar has the whole technical aspect of it, which uh, this show doesn't. But neither is it the sort of just puppet draped in front of a background um, doing cutesy things that uh, that Twizzle and Torchy were about. Texas is going to be riding. You're crazy. Just as well ride with a rat. I told you not to talk to Joe like that. I tell you. Plug him while you got... And here we have another Shut scene up, of uh, David Graham having an argument with himself. <gasps> oh, now he's pulled a gun on himself. He's very talented, that man. Knocking off Tex Tucker. Not for you or anyone else. Now, don't try and stop me, Joe. Or you'll get it, too. <laughs> Sorry, Joel, but I don't like being shot at. That's okay. And just for the record, you're in. Thanks, Joe. All right, Ben. Oh, so Tex is now joined up with the bad guys. Uh, is he pretending, or is it all true? Well, what do you think? Of course, he's only pretending. Right. Now we can go. I'll be glad when this load's safe in the bank. Uh, if it's going to be safe. The bank just isn't safe anymore. Oh, well. well. <laughs> Maybe the new sheriff will do something about that. Well, uh, one, what's wrong with the old one, if you ask me? Oh, let's not argue about that. It's time we moved off. Yeah, whenever the, the town of Forfather Falls turned against Tex, you could always rely on certain characters like uh, Grandpa Twink and Ma Jones and uh, Dan Morse were the three who would generally stick by him, I think, whereas the others tended to be uh, to be fairly fairly dim and just uh, distrust him until he proved his worth and they respected him again until the next time things went wrong and they immediately blamed him. We have no intention of deserting, no matter how much we disapprove. Look at them cases. Yeah, each one loaded with gold. Here we go. Looking now, in, uh, this is a night scene where... Uh, the baddies are about to uh, accost a, a wagon coming out of Four Feather Falls that's are. loaded with gold. Now, I'm just looking at the the starry backdrop. It's really beautiful. Uh, I know it's an odd thing to mention, and it points to me not actually looking at the action on screen, but that's a really beautiful backdrop. And again, it, as I said about this being such a well-made show, it's just another level of uh, of progress beyond what they were doing with uh, with Twizzle and Torchy previously. There is even clouds in that sky. It's lovely. Hold your fire. You ain't got a chance. Yeah, you'll have to come and get us first. Hold it. Hold it and stop the shooting. I'll plug the next man that fires. Yeah, you go, Tex. Oh, it's a double cross, eh, Tucker? You dirty lowdown. Button your lip. Drop your guns, everyone. And what I love about this as well is that it's... I mean, obviously, it's a kid's show uh, in every sense of the word. But it's not... It's not overly kiddy. It's not overly cute. Um... When there's a shootout, there's a proper shootout, and people are having guns blown out of their hands and everything. It, I think probably of all the, the black and white puppet shows, the Jerry Anderson ones, this is probably the one that is the most underrated. I would, I would love to see this be remade. Actually, I think this would be a really good, uh, a good fit for, for 21st century kids TV to have something uh, set in the past like this. And these are all really nice characters as well. Uh, they may be you know, stereotypes, they may be uh, a bit one note, but they're all very pleasant. But in any case, you should have realized, once a lawman, always a lawman. And that brings us to the end of 
once a lawman. Uh, I I enjoyed that, yes. Um, it was a shame there was no song from Tex, actually, in that episode. I... Yeah, I much like with Supercar, I do feel like I've kind of let this show down by not looking at it more often. Because I don't think there's anything... anything bad in this show, really. It's... It's only 12 minutes per episode, it's just the right length for a, a nice little children's story. Um, yeah, a nice little look at uh, the past of Jerry Anderson and promises for the future. Bye-bye.